Okay, we officially swapped at least one piece. Oh wait, it's on the floor, it's on the floor. I see it, I see it, I see the missing piece. Oh, oh, oh. no. <laughs> Hi guys, so I've done a bunch of complicated and highly produced videos lately. So I thought today we would just do a casual video about my very first online puzzle competition, which is also the competition where everything went wrong. And make sure that you stay tuned until the end of this video because I'm gonna tell you how you can get an exclusive bonus competition video from me completely for free. So you guys know that usually Tammy and Yvonne will pair up. However, Tammy was helping to run this contest. So Yvonne asked me instead, I was, so like honored to be asked by her. <laughs> so I went over to her house and we were doing the pairs event and also we were both doing the individual event. Okay, check out this setup. I show up and we have the laptop, we have the table, we have the two chairs, we have the puzzle that we will be puzzling with. Do not open until instructed, so we're not opening it. Hey, hey kitty, I I hey kitty. Don't steal our puzzle pieces, okay? This, this might be a problem. You get it out of your system now, and then when we're puzzling, don't do it. She can just sense that there are gonna be puzzle pieces here in a couple minutes. <laughs> Luckily, the cat didn't actually jump up on the table while we were puzzling. That would have made it even more chaotic than it already was. So I think there were about 50 pairs participating. Uh, we were in a Zoom call with everyone. And to make sure that you don't know what the puzzle is going into it, uh, the organizers would mail out the puzzle in an opaque bag. So right before the time started, we were told that we could open up the bag, take out the puzzle. Uh, we were allowed to use scissors for this part. This part was not timed. Ooh, Let's zebras. Let's see what you're working Fun. on this morning. Guy or yeah, your puzzle should be wrapped um, in plastic. Whatever you want. I do. That's all. I'll be water. Stand until we say go. And it gave us a chance to take a quick look at the puzzle, start coming up with a game plan. We're gonna puzzle it here in three, two, one, go. So once again, we had issues with the cellophane. <laughs> I'm nothing if not consistent. So we started by just turning everything over and sorting out the edges. We had decided that Yvonne would do the sky, including the sky edges, and I would do the rest of the edges and the water. Okay, no, no, my first piece was wrong. Okay, we got our first pieces. <laughs> And here is a close up of the puzzle, so you can see what we're talking about. I'd say this was on the easier side for speed puzzling because we have a lot of different distinct elements, except for those zebras in the middle. That was surprisingly difficult. You'll see that at the end. I also just wanna say, I am not making excuses. I fully accept where we ended up. I don't want to diminish anyone else's achievements here. However, it was very early for us here on the West Coast. So it started at 10.30 a.m. Central Time, which is 8.30 a.m. Pacific Time. I am a morning person. I love mornings. But I had to get up, get dressed, get myself over to Yvonne's house all before 8.30 a.m. So I was really tired. Um, I think if it had started like an hour later, I would have been so much more alert. I'd kind of be curious to see a graph of everyone's finish times plotted against what time zone they're in to see if the further west you go the longer it tended to take. Anyway, whenever I'm speed puzzling, I always tend to jump around anytime I start getting stuck. I was definitely missing some edges, so instead of struggling over that, I just started 
uh, gathering the blue water pieces and sort of looking for the missing edges at the same time. And then after putting in a couple water pieces, I just immediately jumped over to these plants in the corner. I'm actually working on a long-term video where I try a bunch of different speed puzzling techniques to see what's actually going to be fastest for me. But for now, I defaulted back to my natural technique, which is to just jump around to whatever catches my eye. So around 20 minutes, you can see that we finally finished the edges. Uh, we had the water done and the sky done. We were making really good progress. And the rest of the landscape really wasn't bad at all. But then at 24 minutes. All right, we've got a first place finisher. Great job to the Reuters. So it was the Reuter sisters who demolished everyone again. You saw them do the exact same thing at Nationals. They beat everyone by several minutes. I'm gonna have to go back to the live stream and see what I can pick up from them because they are so fast. And I've mentioned before about these competitions how you really don't know how anyone else is doing or if they're about to finish. And that was especially true here. Like when you're in person, you can sort of glance over at the person next to you. But in this online competition, we would have had to fully stop, walk up to the computer, look at the tiny little Zoom screen. And we didn't have the live stream commentary playing, so we truly had zero idea how anyone else was doing until they uh, started announcing when people had finished. So I feel like we made pretty good progress again on the landscape. But then as we hit 30 minutes, all that was left was the zebras. And this was so surprisingly tricky. All of those stripes just looked exactly the same. So we really slowed down with like 25 pieces left. It was so frustrating. there is we both tapped the screen to stop it, which ended up resetting it. But if I go back into the footage and I just stop at the frame right before it resets, our final time is 33.57. In the organizer's official time, they got 33.55. Um, on an online contest, you're like, it's always going to be a little bit off from each other, but no one was close enough to us that it made a difference. All right, we did it. Those zebras, that's what slowed us down. So, okay, here are the results. Here's the top six. Just look at how far ahead the Reuter sisters are. They're actually going to Worlds and they're competing in all three. They're doing pairs and individual and team. I'm so excited to see them go up against Alejandro and all the other top puzzlers. Like you guys are not gonna wanna miss this. Put it on your calendar now. Also, they were saying on the live stream that there was a recent Spanish competition that used this exact puzzle. 
and that the Reuters were serious competition against the Spanish puzzlers. So I am a little disappointed that we didn't make top three, but to be fair, Yvonne and I had never puzzled together before. We didn't do any practice puzzles. And also it was really early. <laughs> so I'm gonna have the Amazon link for this puzzle right down below if you wanna get one and you wanna race us. But then we had a little bit of time before the individual event. Uh, that's the one where things, like the teams, or I mean the Paris event was, was mostly fine. Individual is where it gets so chaotic, just wait. So Yvonne and I actually uh, passed the time playing some puzzle chess. And I'm gonna have a video all about puzzle chess coming out very soon. Uh, make sure you watch that to find out who won. <laughs> all right, so now we're moving on to individual and, oh boy, this was, this was a lot. <laughs> So once again, we were in a Zoom call. It was basically the same setup. Um, we each had our own package that we could open up right before the time was gonna start. Okay, here we go. Individuals is happening. Ooh, I see plates. I see cake. I like oh that. boy, there's that a lot of different textures. I don't know that. if I like that. So here is the puzzle. And I mean absolutely no shade to Cobble Hill. I'm sure they make great puzzles. But as a competition puzzle for speed, uh, this is not what I would have chosen. There are just so many similar textures going on and just a lot of the same shape over and over and over. Three, two, one, go. pressure being right next to each other. I know. Oh, these are big pieces. Yep, they are. Ah. Why am I so bad at this? Oh no, I'm getting them under the thing. Okay, so here are the first two things that went wrong. Um, number one, we really should have looked up the size of Cobble Hill puzzles and set up a second table. We could not spread out, we were so cramped, and we were extra cramped because we had to be mindful that our pieces weren't mixing together there in the center. And then the second thing that went wrong, um, the way that we laid out the poster board, my pieces kept sliding underneath, so I had to keep reaching down to pull them out, which was distracting and time consuming. So my strategy was, instead of starting with the edge, I decided to start with these two colorful stripes going down the middle. So it took me 15 minutes to get everything turned over, uh, finish the two stripes, and then start working on the cat. And just look at how cramped I am. Like, I wish I had the space to fully spread out all of the pieces and also somewhere else to put the box top. Like, this just was not the ideal puzzling setup. Oh boy, so here's the next thing that went wrong. Um, at about 20 minutes, Yvonne's computer started beeping with a low battery, even though it was plugged in. So Yvonne just fully left her puzzle to go take a look at it, 
because if we got kicked out of the Zoom call, our times wouldn't be counted in the official results. And this was so disappointing because I was so excited for us to have a rematch after getting first and second at nationals, but her computer issues just fully took her out of the race. Like at this level, if you get up for three minutes, that just puts you so far behind. So I kept puzzling, but there was a lot going on all around me. So again, not ideal puzzling conditions. minutes, I really thought I would have a lot more done by then. And you can see in the middle of the table, uh, some of our pieces are getting very close together. We actually ended up with a few pieces where we could not tell whose was whose, so we just kind of left them in the center for each other to like grab if we needed them. Not a very efficient way to do a puzzle. And then at about 47 minutes, um, Yvonne got up to look at her computer again because the battery just would not stop beeping. I just ended up telling her, like, we're filming this, we have proof of our official times. If the computer dies, like, it's fine, whatever, it's fine. Luckily, it held on until just after we both finished, so that actually ended up being okay. Also, I noticed it zooming into the footage here, Look at how precarious all of her pieces are right at the edge of the table. I'm so stressed out just looking at that. Well, we just passed an hour. <laughs> Nobody's finished yet. Oh, there's the corner. I don't know how I missed that this entire time. Okay, I think I might have one of your pieces. This one is in no man's land. Yep, that one fits here. <laughs> okay, we officially swapped at least one piece. So we passed an hour and nobody had finished. That is so rare for a 500 piece speed puzzle to take every single competitor over an hour. And I'll be totally honest, when we were hitting this point, I truly did not care anymore. My back was hurting. It was taking forever. I was just so over this puzzle. We've got a first place winner, 107.35, Simi Berman. Great work, Simi. Becca, great work. Second place, 109.07, we had you. We've got Robin finishing at 109.41. Great work, Robin. You can go ahead and turn off your video. Evie, 109.50, just nine seconds later. Great work, go ahead and turn off your video. And we've got Kyle, we'll call it 110.13. Great work, Kyle, 110.13, awesome job. I think you have one of my pieces. Which one? There should be some bright orange at the top. I don't have any bright orange. Oh, maybe it's on the floor. Maybe it's under here. Oh no. <laughs> okay, I'm done, but I'm missing one piece. So I'm gonna stop my timer there. Mind if I just glance over mm -hmm. at the pieces? And our next finisher is Karen Covet at 113.27. Great work, Karen. Oh wait, it's on the floor, it's on the floor. No. Okay, <laughs> Tech, now I'm done. Uh, I had a piece on the floor. You can add like 10 seconds to my time. <laughs> 113.37, thanks Karen. Oh my God, I'm never doing that puzzle again. Seriously, 
Where's this other bird? All right, Yvonne's just finishing up. Is that it? You done? There's two pieces missing. Oh, there's two pieces missing. Oh, <laughs> three pieces missing? No, wait, there's still one piece missing. You have there. a piece in your hand. No, it doesn't go there. There's one more. Oh. Uh, floor, floor. Uh. Yvonne, your 10 second penalty has you finishing at 122.21. Great work despite a lot of difficulties. <laughs> Great. One piece missing. It's got to be somewhere around here. was uh, 11330 but you have to add on a couple seconds for uh, when I was looking for that piece on the ground. So they put my official time at 11337. Yvonne's was 12230 but remember that she missed a lot of time messing around with the computer. So here are the top six times in our division. Honestly, this entire solve was so chaotic that I didn't even know that I got sixth place until the next day when I checked the times. So I am glad that I managed to squeak into the prize spots despite everything going wrong, but this is so wild. So they used the exact same puzzle for a second division after us, and every single person in that top six beat our entire top six. The organizers really went to a lot of trouble to make sure that the puzzle was kept secret from the second group, so I really don't think it was that they could see it early. Um, I think they were just all a lot faster than all of us. <laughs> Sarah Schuler did it in 51 minutes, which was a full 20 minutes faster than me. And she also beat both of the Reuter sisters by seven minutes and 11 minutes, which is just so incredibly impressive. And then uh, here's a look at the final finished puzzle. Super tricky, um, as I said, because of all of those textures, but also because the pieces don't make a perfect grid. Like there are some wacky, wacky shapes going on in there. So this was uh, definitely a challenge to try to do for speed and to do quickly. Anyway, uh, I think that's all I've got on the competition. Uh, don't forget that my second puzzle with Ravensburger called Gradient Cascade just came out last week. You can get it at Barnes & Noble, uh, both online and in stores. And I actually brought Yvonne an early copy when I went over there. Okay, this is the first one of the second puzzle that I've ever signed. This is a present for Yvonne, who I am going to be puzzling with for a competition today. What do you want me to write? Uh, <laughs> I guess we just do like happy puzzling. Sure, I was just about to say happy puzzling. Okay. <laughs> Yay. Okay, wait, don't go yet. I have another big announcement. I am starting a free weekly newsletter. You guys love free things, or at least you love to complain when things aren't free. So I hope you'll all go sign up. I'm actually using Patreon to do this because they recently introduced a free tier. So you can go sign up over there. And then once a week, I'll be releasing a completely free newsletter with all the information about what I'm working on, sneak peeks, and also the biggest puzzle news from all over the world. And as a little incentive, I have another competition video that previously was only for paid patrons, but I decided to make it public for anyone who signs up for my newsletter. So you can go over there and you can go watch that right now. Completely free. Did I tell you it was free? 
You guys like free things, right? <laughs> so let me know in the comments if I've inspired you to start speed puzzling. Uh, your code word will be zebra. And that's all I've got. So thank you for watching and I will see you all next time. And go sign up for my newsletter.